What's this tiny little building doing beside the Earl Chanfield? Have I made this the wrong scale? Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I'm building a commercial high street that crosses underneath my railway viaduct. I'm fascinated by the scale of real buildings. I've compared the scale of Bradford's Victorian buildings to more modern counterparts in previous videos. As the centre of the world's textile trade in Victorian times, buildings were statements of power and no expense was spared. But things were done differently in the 50s, 60s and 70s, and there is a fascinating example of this in Ilkley. Physically joined to the side of the Grand Crescent is this little rendered building. It looks like a doll's house next to the Crescent. The top of its third storey is below the ceiling height of the hotel's second storey. It looks like a bizarre mistake. It's a wonderful juxtaposition of real-world scales, a tale of two centuries. And it's something that I want to reflect in Chandwell. I used photos and videos of the real thing to draw out its shape in Inkscape. I made it a bit taller than the one in Ilkley, as I want to include a more prominent set of shop fronts. I printed the label and stuck it onto cereal packet scored, folded and glued it. I think this looks okay. Yes, it's a bit weird compared to next door, but no more weird than the real thing in Ilkley. The building is made to fit an oddly shaped patch of ground. The mock-up helped me realise that the back wall needed to be a couple of millimetres longer for it to fit properly. I printed the parts to a sticky label. I gave some thought to how to join the walls at strange angles, and I made some notes on the components. The floors were stuck to 1mm card and cut out. Everything else was stuck to half millimetre card. This left me with a kit of parts that just needed to be assembled. I noted on a floor piece how the walls would attach around it, and using guidelines on the components, glued it to the inner gable with PVA. Once both floors were in place, I glued these to the outer gable, which is longer than the first and is at an alarming angle. Because the front and back walls join the sides at acute angles, special cuts are needed for things to fit. Holding my ruler along the edge of the front, I hold my scalpel at an angle of about 60 degrees. And then, using many light strokes, I cut my way through the card. This leaves a chamfered edge, which hopefully will help the join later. I found a white render texture at textures.com, but once printed, it just looks like whitish grey. I took a photo of the real dry riser inlet in Ilkley and added that just for fun. Bricked up windows are added as holes in the outer layer of texture with bricks behind. Bricks and doors are from scale scenes and windows are using the sticky label technique as usual. The backs of the windows are coloured with a sharpie marker and then the outer layer of half millimetre card is added to the inner. For the front and back I wrap the outer layer with texture cut, wrap and glaze the windows and then glue it to the inner layer. The edge of texture is wrapped around the chamfered card edges to leave a thin angled edge which thankfully seems to fit nicely here. A bit of paper is visible around the fold but a grey and brown watercolour pencil sorts that out. I want these frames to be red once made, it's easy to paint them with watercolour paints. The wet paint naturally colours the fronts and inner edges of the frames. And anything that you get on the glazing can simply be dabbed away with toilet paper. Because of the unusual angles, I can't use clamps to hold the building together. So a load of elastic bands does the job. This was important to get this edge glued as good as possible. The ground is bending up a bit, so I add some weights to hold it down as I glue the building into place. It's been a while since I've needed the big weights, but they did well in combination with a right angle jig to keep the building in place as the glue dried. My construction was not as accurate as I would have liked, and I had a gap of a couple of millimetres here at the back. A patch of texture covers that up nicely, and then a downspout covers the join. Not bad. I added a chimney, roof, tiles and gutters, and then I varnished it. The real building in Genteel Ilkley is a beautiful clean white render. 
The Chandwell building has not been cleaned in over 20 years and stands right next to a railway viaduct. So I add grey and brown watercolour paint to the varnish as I apply it. And then finish off with a bit of weathering powder. I have gone maybe a little too far, but I think that it should suit Chandwell and the location well enough. This is not the only oddly shaped building in Chandwell. The Weir pub fills an oddly shaped patch of ground too. Here's a look at how I built that one. I discussed more about the scale of this new building in my last members update. If you're interested in that, please consider supporting my channel by becoming a member. Join me next week then to see the construction of the shop fronts. The first two shops of many, many more to come. Until then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.